And that is also one of the reasons why this large bank has actually asked us the question, well, okay, how do we actually solve it? What is the strategy and design approach to bring customers online, to engage with them, to sell something online, to, because they have to make the transformation from an offline organization to a digital one, because customers simply don't go there anymore. Before I go in, into the actual case, just a brief introduction as to the framework and approach we have been using, and potentially a word up front on why is digital so complex? And you have to get all these disciplines together from strategy to innovation to product to marketing to the experience to technology to requirements engineering. Not only have to get all of these disciplines together, but you have to get them across the life cycle of such an online portal of such a program together from strategy to concept to execution to ongoing improvement. Now you might have McKinsey walking in doing a beautiful business case and then leaving you doing the rest. Or you might have a beautiful global brand agency, but then it's another agency, a local one, who for one country will do some UX things, some UX concepts. Typically, very often, you will find many, many holes in there as well. There is very often no UX strategy, very often no innovation strategy, very often no product strategy. The big challenge is obviously, how do we get that stuff integrated? And therefore, to solve that question and to provide an answer, we have developed a framework how you would approach such major relaunches or launches of new products, new portals, etc. And I don't want to cover so much the theory, but rather talk to you about it. Throughout the next slides, throughout the case, you'll see what is happening. So how we approached it, we had a first six-week phase, not to get the details right, but basically throw the stone in the right direction to get the overarching guidelines correct for the strategy that this organization would need to put in place. And after it, once we got the big guidelines in place, we went on to a longer-term strategy track that would actually start detailing out that strategy and explain really what it means. In parallel, the execution already started on some details. Um, yeah, and we are now finally not far away from the launch. But let's talk about the first phase, so phase of six weeks, where we were five people, basically, plus some people from the customer, and looked at the big picture. Where we really started was in segmentation, understanding who are these customer groups. And I guess the biggest learning we have had there, and the biggest thing yeah, I, I would propose to really look into is that segmentation is fundamentally different if you look at online segmentation and branch segmentation and overall segmentation. I mean, how important is the group of wealth people, yeah, of wealth management, customers for a bank? It's super important. But for offline, they are extremely important, but online, they are less important. Because regardless if they use online or offline, the bank will just do anything it takes to keep these customers happy. However, for the broad masses of retail customers who might have an income of, say, 1,500 euros per month and who might be working at a supermarket or something, the bank just, it's not profitable to keep these people in a branch. So for online, they are supremely important, but for offline, they are just not as important. The bank won't operate successfully. Therefore, one of the big objectives here in this case was to bring those customers, retail customers, for instance, online. So big learning here, divide your segmentation or the priority of each segment between online and offline. Then we came up with data-driven personas. I mean, we really knew for each of these segments we had a persona, and we really knew what are their frustrations? What are the products they're using? What is their computer literacy? What is their financial literacy? So we brought together different segmentation studies to get those personas done. And only when you get data-driven personas, you know who your customers are. And today, and in the early talk we heard today, um, we are so distant from customers. Data has created a barrier. Many corporate people never get to meet an actual customer. And then based on that, we looked at the customer life cycle, 
and looked at, okay, what are the needs of each segment around the customer life cycle? So at this stage, we had 11 segments. Later, we would have 18 segments because we included wealth management and um, small business in there. We looked at around the life cycle, what are the needs? So we came up between 20 to 80 distinct needs any audience would have. These are just a few examples. And very often what we find, what I find is people are too much purchase focused, but loyalty, how to get through to loyalty, and that's the ultimate question because otherwise you're not going to drive customer lifetime value. Um, so we had massive amounts of data. So if you look at 11 segments times 50 needs on average, we had a couple of hundred of them. So we had to aggregate it back in one big picture. And here is just one example, the discovery of products and the comparing of products. Banks, customers just don't trust in banks to provide them the correct advice. So if you recognize that this is a profound issue, just making a product website prettier won't do the job, just won't sell more then. But none of us here in this room has probably booked a hotel for tonight without looking at customer ratings and reviews. So that's how the hotel industry has solved it. Now, I don't know if that's the right approach for banking, but only when we have understood that this what the real problems are, then we can hunt for new and innovative solutions that might eventually close the gap. But beyond user needs, we have also been looking at business challenges. So we're interviewing the different departmental leads of that organization to really understand, okay, what are the objectives of marketing, of IT? What do they need to get done? What do they need to get out in terms of numbers? Then based on user goals, user needs, and business objectives, we created one overarching vision. And that's a point in time where I see many problems, many projects actually stumble, have difficulties. Because very often an executive in a sleepless night will invent a vision which typically goes like, in three years' time, our revenues will go up by X percentage. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't tell much. So what we did really here, I mean, here you see, at least it gives an impression. We had hundreds of data points from our customers, and we had hundreds of data points from the different studies and the different interviews on the business side. And based on that, we're actually able to create a really detailed vision, which was where we were actually able to execute on, which was meaningful, and which provided really an explanation to what this was about and to what we were after. Going back to the customer needs, I mean, one of those hundreds of needs might have simply been, I need to be able to talk to my bank. I need to be able to talk to you. Then you can come up with solutions to that in tier of you, yeah? I mean, chat, phone, Skype, whatsoever. And if you take that further and go into the documentation of these requirements, you typically end up with something like that. That's a picture I took in a... German ministry, which had actually printed out most of their requirements over the years and classified them according to whatever structure. <laughs> I mean, they printed it out, but in many organizations, you would find the digital synonym to that, meaning piles of Word documents in folders, and nobody has an overview anymore. Nobody sees the total picture. And you don't see the picture, you just are not able to prioritize and you're not able to see where the options are. So what we did instead were we came up with one large printout that would cover all of the functional translation of what user needs and the business needs. Then you could see on one single slide, basically on one single large printout, what potentially this bank could be building to respond to what is to be done is a blueprint basically for an online banking for this bank. That is broadly what we covered in the first six weeks. So we looked into who are our customers, who is important in there for the digital channel specifically, what are their needs, what is the business needs, what are the business needs, come up with a vision that actually does make sense, and come up with a first translation as to what this could mean. 
In the second phase, the longer term strategy, where we really cooked off, we looked again at this picture from different dimensions. From a user perspective, where can we make the biggest impact for our customers? From a business perspective, um, where are the biggest levers on the business case? How can we, where do we most need to change our service model? And from a technical perspective, what is complex but potentially poorly understood? And based on that, we came up with 13 areas that we needed to deep dive on. One of them was, I mean, here you get a few ideas. One of them was the area of advice. Now, if people don't come to branches anymore, we probably need to somehow able, be able to help them online. That's why advice was in there. Dashboard is an obvious pick. Yeah? Everybody has to go somewhere after login. Our personalization, if people spend 400 minutes per year online, well, what can we do with all the data they're leaving in these 400 minutes to better serve, ultimately? And each of these 13 areas was, was addressed in a sprint. And the sprint was basically a two-week exercise which, and a great strength of the program was that because it was so structured, we could simply repeat it all over again. So on a Monday, um, we would take a piece of that scope landscape, so a piece of advice, look at it, discuss in the team, okay, what is this really about? On a Tuesday, we would kick off technology and ask ourselves the question, okay, what is out there uh, today already? What do we need to build potentially? And on a Tuesday as well, we invited real customers based on those personas in and asked them, okay, dear 28-year-old uh, Mallory who has just had uh, your first job, what do you expect or how can we help you here? On a Wednesday, we would have business workshops and ask the business, okay, guys, what do you need? And then we basically had a week where we would develop different concepts for the different devices to respond and solve the challenges we have found in that area, for example, in the area of advice or search. Based on that, we could deviate scope definitions, and we were looking into the business context again to say, okay, how do we measure success, for instance? And back on a Friday or Thursday or Friday of the second week, we re-invited the customers in and asked, hey, here is at least a pre paper prototype or something clickable but very basic. Does this solve your need? Does this, is this appealing to you? And we video filmed um, those sessions. That's how the sprint worked. So initially we had 18 segments and for each segment we had a persona. That was really great because yeah, we got to order, understand our target audience better. But you just can't design for 18 different segments. That's way too many. So we did a look at as to how they would behave on different axes. So what level of income do they have? What is their financial literacy, their computer literacy, their level of loyalty towards the bank, um, their branch dependence, etc. And based on that, we ensured that these customers, that we would have a customer basically on each extreme and in the middle as well. And that way we managed to regroup down from 18 segments down to five. Now, here is an unusually complex cross-channel custom experience journey. That is about potentially one of the margin highest products of the bank, um, housing, credit, mortgage. Basically, we looked at, okay, how does this work out today? How does this serve? How does a bank serve today its customers for this very key product? How well do they support the customer or not support the customer, but where the customer is expecting actually that level of support. So we looked at customer expectations in that context, needs, etc. Look where the organization is today, and then they went on designed the target journeys against which we then mapped individual screens, individual solutions. And importantly, the journey did was not only online, but really from the beginning. So we looked at okay, what house can I afford? Was part of the journey for instance. So that is an example of a wireframe that we got to do in these two-level sprints. Out of these, we have probably done a couple of hundred, and we have documented the key requirements that this would entail as well. From a business perspective, 
Um, we looked at the key questions like, what is a strategic rationale? Why would you ad do advice, actually, online as opposed to over the phone or send a, an advisor out there? I mean, does it make sense? What are the value drivers? I mean, where are the levers? How do I measure success? What are the key business capabilities? I mean, do I need to display product adverts or whatsoever in there? And basically, let, that led us to the point where this scope landscape got greatly refined. We got a way deeper understanding of what is to be built. But what it didn't tell us yet was how important is something. Because obviously you can't realize that picture um, in the next six months. Yeah? Way too big. So we went through an exercise of prioritization in which we looked at each and every individual functionality. So, for example, where is my next branch? Being able to find that on your mobile phone. And asked ourselves, okay, how important would that be for Mallory? And for Mallory, it's probably important. I mean, she's an online person, but some other people might not yet have smartphones. So, we rated really each functionality from a customer perspective. Although, from a business perspective, what is the impact on the number of customers, the impact on number, of the utilization rate? Um, the impact on the different business centers. I mean, will that help sell more insurances, more whatever contracts? And last but not least, all that IT and organizational complexity, how difficult is it basically to make that happen? These were the angles which we used for prioritization, and that allowed us ultimately to give some color to this picture. And the darker the green, the more value there is in there. The lighter, yeah, the less value. If you look in parallel at technology and what is out there today and what can meaningful be built in the next 18 months, you get to the point where you can say, okay, that is now the picture with which we're going to market with. That's what we're going to have in 18 months. Then the last important question we needed to answer, okay, now we know what we have when we will go live. And we know the target state, but now we have to build a roadmap. And obviously, the prioritization really helped us here, um, which allowed us to build a detailed roadmap. We are differentiated by product domain, so we would divide it in personal finance management, dashboard, daily banking, I mean, across the scale. In need three months releases, we had a roadmap figured out that would make, yeah, an in between between quick wins, and doing strategically the right thing. That was the art of building that roadmap. There is a lot of value in that roadmap because ultimately, and unfortunately, I mean, you may wonder, does it make sense to build a long-term roadmap in a world that is moving that fast? And I would answer, it's important to give it a shot because, unfortunately, the IT infrastructure, particularly of dinosaurs like large banks, they can't turn their IT around like that. A portal typically for the large organizations in Europe lasts for eight and a half years at this point in time. In banks, it's often longer. So you have to foresee how your technological architecture can evolve. That's why there is an enormous value in these roadmaps, because ultimately it gives you a first feeling how you're likely to spend the next couple of hundred of millions. That's the value that is behind this picture. Ultimately, these concepts got documented in a small book, a user experience flipbook, we called it, where the key concepts would be detailed out and which we handed throughout the organizations to key stakeholders, that everybody can get a feeling for how this platform will likely look in three years from today. That is how we managed next to that vision that was a second important deliverable to really illustrate, okay, what will be there, what are we up for?